It's your guy who is never lying. Sometimes defiant. TP way the giant. Ladies and gentlemen, giant fans, we are down bad right now, yo. We are down bad. I can't even hold you. Usually, if we take an L, I'm, I'm able to sleep it off. Next day, I'm ready to shake back, get the marching forward. This Eagle game, man, man. This Eagle game really did it for me, man. And it did it for a lot of us. We headed down destruction right now, man. And when your team is doing what our team is doing, the blame game starts happening. But see, this is the thing about the blame game. Is I don't like the laziness. If we really going to do the blame game, let's do it for real. Let's go. Let's go. I, I, I'll start with this, man. I don't like the laziness. I don't like the laziness when whenever we take a L, the first thing that comes out of people's mouths is Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is trash. We need a better quarterback and blah, blah, blah. This is not, a, this is not me making a campaign of keeping Daniel Jones. This is not me necessarily defending Daniel Jones. This is just the, this is just the real. If we're going to play the blame game, I just want to do it right. Daniel Jones deserves criticism, and he also has a piece of the pie in this blame game. But I will say, a lot of the hate has been unwarranted. Let's take the Eagle game, for example. Eagle game, I do think that Daniel Jones came out uh, ready to rock, ready to play. Made some good throws, and ultimately, he, he, he did what he could do. The offensive line was completely depleted. Depleted. Everything can't be Daniel Jones. That can't be the escape goal for everything. I know Malik Neighbors came on out and made the statements that he has made, speak, saying that he's he was open a lot and, and the things of that nature. And y'all took that and was just like, Daniel Jones. But honestly, we watched the same game. What did y'all expect Daniel Jones to do? He didn't have time for shit. Hold the offensive line accountable. They failed this versus the Eagles. Now, granted, they've been playing better than we have seen the offensive line play for a long time. But let's talk this Eagle game. They have failed us. It was a, it was a terrible game. But don't be quiet about that. If we're going to play the blame game, Let's play it for real. Let's talk about the receivers. I mean, what, what else is it going to take? What else do y'all need to see before we are holding these receivers accountable? Wondell Robinson has a third down conversion again. I mean, how many times have we seen this? Daniel Jones literally hits him right in the chest, right in the numbers. And Wondell Robinson drops the ball again. He loud about that too. Darius Slayton, it's so easy for y'all to say, oh, the ball was behind Darius Slayton. Come on, Daniel Jones, ball placement is trash. And I get it. It could have been a better throw. But in the same breath, I am looking around the league, and there are mediocre receivers making those catches. On good teams, those receivers are making those catches. If it hits you in both palms, it, I don't want to hear it, man. You are a professional, a professional wide receiver. It is your job to make that catch and bring it in. Every throw isn't going to be rainbow and sprinkles. That's not football. It doesn't work like that. Take the best of the best. The best of the best. Every throw isn't money. Got to make the plays, receivers. Malik Neighbors. Oh, y'all don't like to talk about our precious jewel. But let's keep it real. You have the piece of the pie in this too. If we're gonna play, if we're gonna do the blame game, let's do it for real. Let's not play around. Let's go. Malik Neighbors can't get in front of the media and make a me, me, me type of statement like that unless he is playing flawless football. You can't go out there and drop key balls that could possibly change outcomes to games and then talk about you doing your job. You have the piece of the pie in this too. 
And, and giant fans are so blinded. They are so distracted and blinded by the fact that we have a special talent. That y'all going to continue to let shit ride. There's a list of things that Malik Neighbors has done that I don't think is healthy in the grand scheme of things. But y'all keep ignoring it because y'all are just so blinded. If we're going to do the blame game, let's do it for real. Let's go. It's so easy for y'all to just go, Daniel Jones. It's bigger than that. Trust me. It is bigger than that. Running backs. You got running backs that's coughing up the ball and, and, and really setting your teams back week in and week out. Devin Singletary has had a fumbling problem. Eric Gray has had a fumbling problem. Yes, we have found the gym in Tyrone Tracy Jr., but he has a fumble. Running backs cannot afford to do that. You got to protect the ball. If we're going to play the blame game, Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, and of course, I can't forget Coach Dave. I love to hear coaches resist the responsibility of coaching. Mm. <laughs> what you say, Coach? What you, 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 you just say, Coach? <laughs> I love coaches <laughs> that resist the responsibility of coaches, that talk negatively about a dude that can't learn and blah, blah. Man, if everybody could learn, we need less coaches. Yeah, that's right. right? If, if the group didn't need management, then we wouldn't make as much. Yep. I love reading draft evals and, and, and somebody's talking about anything other than pedigree, talking about how poor somebody's hand usage is. Well, that's coaching. Right. Mm. I don't run away from coaching. I run to coaching. Love it. it all is in line with that not seeking comfort because when you're a coach that's talking about somebody can't learn, you're seeking comfort because your teaching is struggling. I can't forget Coach Dable. He's the head of the tree. He's to be held accountable for everything. For the decisions. For the decision to take over offensive play calling. For the decisions not to have or create a well-balanced, oiled machine offensively that gets everyone involved. A head coach's job is to put your players in the best position to succeed, point blank period. And if you do not do that, you are failing at your job. It is your responsibility and you deserve the blame. Just like if we were winning, you would deserve the credit. He's going in these press conferences, just straight up lying and, and, and just pouring out a bunch of bullshit. Talking about giving a spark to your team. When I could have sworn I heard you say that when we got killed 40 to 0 in Dallas. And you said that you kept Daniel Jones in to create a spark. If we're going to play the blame get we got Deontay Banks giving up on plays. Not once, but over and over again. For me, this is the number one factor and the number one disappointment is we should never, we should never have to question a player's effort on the field. Never. I said this before, I say it again. When May 2022 so beautiful in my eyes was, was the effort. Everybody wanted to get after it. We weren't the most talented. But you've seen the effort week in and week out. That is what I appreciated. We are so far removed from that, from this team, man. Good teams, you never question their effort. And as a professional athlete, that should never even be a conversation. We are dead in the water whenever that is a conversation. Whenever there's a question of effort. Special teams. It starts off with Graham Gano chasing down returners to try to make a tackle. Even after that, we missing field goals. We can't do the simple things. I'm looking around the league and I'm seeing kickers make 50 yarders look like nothing. It's looking like straight dessert. But not us. Not us. We got to hold our breath every time we kick a field goal. Special teams has been trash. The only highlight 
that we can really take from special teams is the game versus Seattle, and that's Isaiah Simmons making the game-winning touchdown. And y'all mean to tell me the only thing that y'all could come up with is Daniel Jones? I've even heard some of y'all say, we are just a good quarterback play away. Really? Is that what y'all think? Is that what y'all believe? Hey, Daniel Jones deserves, deserves his fair share of blame. But we're not going to sit here and act like this is just a DJ problem. Hell no. This is a New York Giant problem. If we're going to do the blame game, let's do it for real, man. And stop just allowing all of these guys to slip through the cracks and hide behind DJ so he can take all the bullets. The truth of the matter is, I don't care who is let go outside of Dexter Lawrence. I don't care what happens. As long as it results in a turnaround, as long as it results in wins, I could care less. Trust me. Let Daniel Jones go if that's what needs to be done for us to win games. But the only thing that I'm saying is we can't keep hiding behind Daniel Jones to max the fact that there's a bigger issue. I'm just a giant fan that wants a resolution. Don't kill me. But I will say this, man. If you still bleed blue, if you are a giant soldier still rocking, still repping, giant salute to you. Being a giant fan ain't for the week. Being a giant soldier ain't for the week. Don't get it twisted. It's always going to be Big Blue. And we down now. But I'm going to be down with us until we turn this shit around, man. Like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe, man. All my giant fans slash soldiers, giant salute to you. Until next time, peace.